What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller, and here we have some packaging and a nice envelope uh, that says Jory. Uh, that's right, it's time for another Micro Brand Monday. Now guys, uh, although it says Jory, this is not my personal watch that I'm reviewing. Uh, this is a watch from Par Weber, and uh, it's a company you may have never heard of, but it's one that I am fairly familiar with. Uh, full disclosure, my consulting firm helped Par Weber out with their website a while back and part of the deal was uh, that I'd get to see the watch they came up with and actually review one in person. So they finally have a pre-production model for me to take a look at and uh, I'm very, very excited because this seems to be something different, like something actually different, not an homage, not a fun take on something. This has a very unique function and I, I would, I'm just very, very eager to see how this came to fruition. So. Uh, let's quickly take a look. This seems to be their press kit. Um, I'm going to be reading some of what is in here for you guys. I'm sure it has the, uh, you know, all the specs and everything. We're going to measure the watch ourselves and see how it feels. But again, this watch has a very interesting function. And uh, yeah, I I'm excited to see what you guys think. So let's take a look. It's 1231 p.m. Let's get down to business. Okie dokie, let's use this old Swiss Army knife and cut into this baby. All right, people love when I talk about the packaging. This is kind of a standard matte black box. Very nice contrast with that mirrored Par Weber font. Okay, we have it embossed Par Weber. A note to our first edition customers whole lot of paperwork here. Let's take a look. Throughout the history of watchmaking, there have been many notable firsts. The first hacking movement, the first automatic chronograph, the first digital display. These moments only come along ever so often, and a few among us get the opportunity to participate in them. We are pleased to present to you our humble edition, the coefficient, the first Enduro Loom timepiece. Thank you for making this moment with us. John Weber, the president of Par Weber, Chicago. Doubles, the bears. Actually, it's very serendipitous that I'm taking a look at this watch right now because I just finished uploading the What Happened to Elgin episode. So there's some uh, Illinois history for you guys. Again, Chicago, Illinois. Serial number 0603A. 10103 coefficient first edition. Oh, and a very cool. Uh, what is this, wax uh, stamp. It's a nice touch, let's get a little closer. Look at that, that's, a, that's pretty cool. You don't see that very often, very cool. All right, we have the you know operation basic functions. We're gonna talk about all that, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then we have a quote, whether it be the sweeping eagle in his flight or the open apple blossom, the toiling workhorse, the blithe swan, the branching oak, the winding stream at its base, the drifting clouds all over the coursing sun, form ever follows function. And this is the law, Lewis Sullivan, 1896. Well, very nice quote from Lewis Sullivan, but I have a feeling this watch is a bit more modern than 1896, but let's go ahead and uh, take a look for sure. Boom, baby, here's the watch. We'll get you in focus, we'll get up close, and we'll see what the Par Weber coefficient is all about. Okay, so the Par Weber coefficient. This looks like a beastly tool watch, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, feels fairly hefty, uh, but you can see the ticking, okay? It is not sweeping, it is very much ticking across those indexes, uh, meaning this is most likely a quartz movement. Now, as we get up a little closer to this Par Weber coefficient, let's talk about that movement. It is, in fact, a Swiss-made Ronda 715 quartz, uh, but this whole watch is assembled in Switzerland, again, with that Swiss-made movement, utilizing a US-made illumination system. 
known as Enduraloom. We're gonna be talking about that a little bit later. So the first thing that stood out to me about this Par Weber coefficient was this big, bold bezel, okay? It's absolutely screaming tool watch, right? Uh, but more specifically, that zero distortion flat sapphire crystal, uh, just how it flows into that big bezel, there's really zero crystal overhang, and not only does that protect the crystal, it also just looks incredibly sleek. Now, I'm very, very happy to say that although this watch is a quartz, that second hand is staying true, hitting each and every index, and believe me, I am meticulously inspecting this watch whenever I see a quartz in my office. If that second hand doesn't hit the indexes, I don't know, I don't really consider myself someone with OCD, but it just bothers me, man. And uh, Par Weber crushed it. That Swiss Ronda, it is staying on the mark. Okay, so we've spoken about the movement and how it's a quartz, but it is staying very true and accurate on the indexes. Uh, we've spoken about that big, bold bezel and how it flows into that crystal, that flat sapphire. Uh, but let's talk about how the thing feels, because let's, let's be perfectly honest. All these things can look good, uh, but if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't feel like a proper watch, then there's no point in even wearing it. So let's start with that bezel. Okay, very positive ratcheting. Uh, let me put that up against the mic. Does not feel like it's going to... Oh, okay. It is bi-directional. But when you are at a location or orientation uh, of your choosing, so let's, let's put it up against the minute hand, um, it does not feel like it is going to be moving around on you. So that's very good. There's no real play. One thing I really do like about bi-directional bezels is that let's say I'm trying to put it up against the 12 o'clock pip and I miss it by a click. I don't have to go all the way around the dial. I can just move it back in place. So that's a benefit to bi-directional. So the ease of use uh, is there for sure. Um, again, everything feels very sleek and smooth. Uh, I believe this is PVD coated. That's right. Uh, PVD coating, 316L stainless steel. So that is very standard when we're looking at tool watches. And again, that PVD coating is going to mitigate any scratches. Uh, just a very tough uh, outer layer for sure. All right, so now that I have the watch in my hands, I wanna feel what it would be like, you know, to set the time and date. Let's take a look at the crown setting and function. Okay, so this is not a threaded crown, but it seems to have two very tangible and tactile clicks when it comes to uh, the crown setting. So this is, you know, a watch with a date complication. So let's go ahead and move the hands around. Okay, now let's move the date. Okay, very nice clicks as the date wheel spins and we can see uh, everything is prim and proper. It seems to be that the date wheel is in line with the date window. That's always very nice to see. Pull it out once more and then, yep, we will be setting the time. So uh, two very distinct clicks when we're looking at the crown setting and function and that's what I wanna see. Uh, I hate sloppy crowns. Uh, although this is not a threaded crown, which I personally would prefer, uh, it doesn't seem like this is going to open up on you, which is, you know, a big plus. Now, as we take a look at this crown, we can see two enormous crown guards uh, protecting it. Again, I would have personally preferred a threaded crown, uh, but this watch does retain a 100 meter water resistance rating. Um, so I personally would not worry about getting this wet because just feeling that crown um, doesn't feel like it's going to just easily open up on you. And again, uh, these crown guards um, definitely gonna offer some protection there. So there's very low likelihood that you're going to open this up with Without really deliberately trying. All right, as we back off a little bit, it is time to break out the calipers and measure the dang thing because although the press kit has all the specs and everything, I don't trust the watchmakers. I gotta do my due diligence and measure this baby myself. So let's check, check out that case diameter. Again, huge crown guards there. We're gonna try to get out of the way of those. And at the widest point, 
about 42.5 millimeter case diameter. Let's measure the lug to lug, because again, that's gonna be the biggest indicator of how it wears on your wrist. 48.3 millimeter lug to lug. And let's check the thickness of this bad boy. 13.9 millimeters thick. And because people get mad when I don't measure this on camera, let's take a look at the lug width. 20 millimeters on the button. So guys, I gotta be honest, if you are, you know, someone that has smaller wrists or you're not used to wearing tool watches, this is going to wear a bit big. I have a feeling just from the measurements alone. Uh, again, I have a seven and a half inch wrist, so this doesn't seem enormous for me, but we won't know until we put it on. So let's go ahead. I'll take off this G-Shock DW6600. <laughs> it's a bit out of focus. And uh, we'll put on this Par Weber coefficient Again, right around 43 millimeter case diameter. Um, I think it's going to be totally wearable uh, for my size wrist. But again, if you have smaller wrists, this might be a, a bit big, but uh, yeah, let's take a look. Here it is, the Par Weber coefficient on my seven and a half inch wrist for the first time ever. Now this came with a leather strap in the box, also a NATO strap and one huge plus. This is a proper tool watch it has drilled lugs. So guys, one thing I love is that with tool watches, you know, you're gonna be wearing them in a multitude of situations and environments. You're going to want to be able to have a lot of strap options. So with 20 millimeter lug width, uh, you know, there's a bunch of straps, a plethora to choose from with that measurement. And, uh, those drilled lugs just makes swapping straps a breeze. So whether you wanna take advantage of that 100 meter water resistance rating and throw this on a silicone strap, whether you wanna use the supplied NATO strap, whether you wanna put it you know, on this leather strap, you have a ton to choose from. And again, swapping them out, it's not going to be a headache at all. Again, every tool watch should have drilled freaking lugs. So I wanted to zoom out a little bit and show you that on my seven and a half inch wrist, this thing is totally wearable. Uh, it doesn't seem too big as far as the lug to lug. Again, it's not encompassing my entire wrist. The diameter is totally wearable. The first or, or the only thing I should say that stands out is that this is very thick. This has a very large profile on the wrist. Again, right around 14 millimeters thick. That's very thick for a quartz watch. But again, for a very uh, robust build for an actual functional watch, uh, I'm okay with that. This is not supposed to be a field watch. This is not supposed to be some slim dress watch that you're gonna slide under the lugs. This is a beefy, robust tool watch. And uh, yeah, it wears like one, but it's not cumbersome. Um, it's not incredibly heavy. Uh, it feels, you know, like a proper watch, doesn't feel like a toy, um, but it is quite thick. Uh, if you're expecting some tiny dainty quartz, this is not it. Now, I just took the watch off and I realized there's some plastic on the case back. Let's take that off. Oh yeah, super satisfying. And here it says Par Weber, Chicago, Illinois. It has uh, some spec information as far as the Swiss Ronda movement, Enduro Loom, uh, water resistance rating, the 20 millimeter lug width, and uh, I believe it's serial number. But what is this Enduro Loom? Okay, because it's it's all over the place. It's on the website all over the place. I should know because I helped them on their website. Um, but what the heck is Enduro Loom? Like you keep saying it, but but like what is it? Well, what you might be surprised to learn is that Enduro Loom has been happening this entire episode right under our noses. That's right, as we can see here, there are 12 LEDs hidden under the bezel that illuminate each hour index. Very, very cool. Now, one of my favorite things about this Enduro Loom function is that uh, you don't notice it under normal light situation. So this isn't like some blinding, vibrant light that's going to bother you. It's not some beacon on your wrist when you're walking around. You really don't notice it. And that's why during most of the shots during this episode, when it's under normal light conditions, uh, you don't see those little LEDs. But again, in low light situations, boy, do they shine. Now, uh, one thing that I wanna, I wanna mention, it's right here in the press kit, is that uh, this is very, very different from anything that I've really seen before. This is in fact an electroluminescent system, uh, meaning that it does take power from a battery. And uh, one big question I had when I first learned about this function was like, oh dear, uh, my G-Shock auto backlight 
it chews through batteries, um, it chews through the solar function. I keep needing to sun the watch after I have that auto backlight feature on. Uh, how often am I going to need to change the battery if I were to use this Par Weber Enduraloom? And uh, four years. That's right, four years before you need to change the battery on this baby. And uh, notice I didn't press any button. Notice there's no timer. Notice I didn't have to mess with the crown. This is not in the glow. Uh, this is happening continuously. So this is a feature that is continuous and you do not need to touch it. You don't need to futz with anything. It's there when you need it and uh, it'll happen continuously and it won't chew through your batteries. Again, four year battery life. That's pretty dang good for a function like this. So inevitably some people in my comment section will question just how functional this function is, right? Is it a gimmick? How often will I need it? You know, I, I already have Indiglo on some of my watches. I already have Loom on some of my watches. I already have Tritium on some of my watches. Like, what's the point? Well, uh, it all comes down to their little tagline for this watch. Superluminova fades, Tritium dies, and Duraloom does not. And uh, again, this is continuous without having to really press any button. Now, um, one thing that made me chuckle is in their press release, uh, they have a section under their Our Story section, and it says, fatherhood is the mother of invention. Uh, and Duraloom is the brainchild of John Weber, founder of Par Weber. Uh, after becoming a father in 2018, John was frequently up late at night to feed his infant son, Gabriel. John was frustrated by the Superluminova watches in his collection. They were rarely legible when he needed them most in the middle of the night. So he set out to design a, an electroluminescent system that could continuously illuminate a wristwatch at all times. So uh, he actually went out and made 257 prototypes in the next 180 days. That's a lot of prototypes in a very short period of time. Um, but this kind of makes sense, okay? So it's legible, tough, reliable for those who depend on their timepieces. I'm just gonna say, uh, there's been numerous times when I go camping, or uh, you know what it's like to work on vehicles. Uh, geez, my Jeep, my STI, uh, my Track 370 that I had for a while, I've, I've you know since gotten rid of it. But when you're <laughs> in an engine bay, or underneath a car, or sometimes underneath a Jeep in the middle of the woods, and you're trying to uh, strap up a broken drive shaft, um, if you need to check your watch, you're gonna have your hands full, your hands are gonna be messy. If you do need to tell the time, um, you're not gonna be wanting to fumble around for uh, you know, a button, and God forbid it's been nighttime for a while, and the loom has faded, and you don't have a free hand to burn the dial with your flashlight. That's where I can see this, you know, really coming in handy. So do I think it's a gimmick? No. Do I think it's fairly novel? Absolutely. Um, do I think that there's definitely gonna be some skeptics out there that just wanna use what they've used before? Absolutely, and that's perfectly fine. I love Loom. I love Tritium. I love my EL backlights on my G-Shocks, but I can also see, a, I, can, I can see both sides. I can see pros and cons. The pros with Loom is that it's very, very bright, especially Seiko's Luma Bright, right? Uh, the downside is I often need to shine it, either leaving it you know, on my wrist outside or burning it with a flashlight. Tritium, it glows for a long while, but after 12 years, you know, it, it's dead. And I'll be honest, most of my Tritium watches, uh, they've been dead for a very long time. Uh, and then G-Shocks, they're great. They're EL backlight. It's the most legible thing I've ever seen. But you need to push a button and then if your solar watch dies and you need to sun it, then, you know, you're, you're kind of screwed. This it's on all the time, so I think it's pretty dang cool, but leave me a comment. I, I, I'm sure there's people on both sides of the aisle. Let me know how you feel. So one of my favorite things about doing what I do, and uh, especially this Micro Brand Monday segment, is seeing all these different ways companies try to actually bring us something different. You know, not everything can be a Submariner homage. <laughs> so I love these innovative companies that are actually trying new things, and uh, Par Weber is definitely one of them. guys. I also see, you know, the pros and cons with Enduraloom. The pros, 
it's on all the time. You don't have to fumble on, around with anything. There's no buttons to push. It's just kind of simple, no brainer. Uh, the cons are that, you know, there's gonna be people in the comment section that are like, oh, if you're in the military or if you're a secret agent or if you're a cop, you don't always want to have a bright dial with LEDs on it at all times. It's gonna give away your position and then you're gonna be exposed and you're gonna be vulnerable to an enemy attack. Okay, that's true in that scenario, but one thing I love about this watch is, heck, even in the press kit, they're like, we developed this because uh, I was a dad and I was sick of having to tell the time when I had my hands full with my infant son. And that's kind of as real as it gets, guys. You don't have to be some spec ops, you know, secret agent Navy SEAL Team 6 bro. You can just be a dude that sometimes needs to be able to tell the time at night. And I love that. I, I absolutely love that. They're not trying to make this anything that it's not. They're not trying to say it's gonna be, this is gonna make you the, the most high speed operator out there. No, they're like, hey, I was a dad. I needed this and uh, this might be helpful for you. And so I really like that very novel, real, realistic take on this whole thing. And uh, even just from the aesthetic, it, it, it looks very different from any other watch. I can't really say it's an homage of anything. I mean, uh, it does have a rotating bezel, does have crown guards, an oversized crown, um, a larger profile, but it seems to be, you know, the contrast is very good. Let's uh, move the hands uh, over a little bit so we can really see that logo. You can see it's a very, very legible dial, very clear, clean, tidy. Um, I dig it, I absolutely dig it. And uh, if you're looking for a tool watch that's a bit different, I think this Par Weber coefficient could be a really, really cool option. Now people get upset during Microbrand Monday when I don't bring up the price. So according to the press kit as of the time of filming, okay, the pre-order pricing for the first edition timepieces are $579. What's my opinion on this? Um, well, people are gonna say it's, it's definitely, you know, pricier for a quartz watch. What I will say is uh, very nice build quality. It feels good in the hand and on the wrist. Uh, has a very novel, unique function. Uh, everything is prim and proper. The fit and fit, fit and finish, excuse me, uh, no complaints there. Uh, as far as functionality goes, you know, sapphire, PVD coating, 100 meter water resistance rating, date function. Um, this is a definite usable tool watch. Uh, if you want something like this, uh, I think it's, you know, under 600 bucks, very reasonable price in my opinion, but for, you know, people get upset. I can't ever bring up a price without someone being upset with me for it. So um, I think it's very reasonably priced because this is a very cool package altogether. Uh, but you know, there are a whole lot of other watches you could get for that price range. None of which really do what this does though. So uh, yeah, the, ultimately, what is worth it to me might be different to you and everybody has different spending habits, different spending abilities. So definitely leave me that comment section because I would love to hear where you guys stand on this. I really love the dynamic look of the dial, how the Par Weber and the indexes kind of are, are laid over that dial, gives it a very dynamic look. Um, I love how the light looks in the low light situations. I love the PVD coating and the contrast between the matte black, the white and the red. Um, I think this watch has a ton going for it. And uh, for those of you who are into this Enduro Loom function, I think that this is, uh, this is it. I mean, this is literally it. No other watch has Enduro Loom, so. Uh, yeah, guys, check it out. I'll, I'll leave links to Par Weber in the description below. I want to thank you for, uh, you know, joining us on this new Microbrand Monday installment. I want to thank Par Weber for sponsoring this episode. And, you know, we can't do any of this content without businesses supporting us. So it's very nice of them to, to want to, you know, send us a watch and uh, their willingness to be highly scrutinized by some obnoxious bearded maniac. It uh, takes guts. So I appreciate everyone that supports us here at the Time Teller channel, especially during these Microbrand Monday segments. So uh, yeah, guys, and thank you for watching it. We can't do any of this without you. What's content without a viewer watching it? So special thanks to you guys. Special thanks to my channel members. Join the channel, $4.99 a month gets you, uh, you know, 
extra, extra privileges. Uh, you get six pieces of content a week. Uh, you get access to the members only Discord chat. Check out all the affiliate links in the description below. Uh, check out my personal website, www.thetimetellershop.com. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.